In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your maps from this to looking like this. Now, if you're part of my ProMotion crew, then you can download all of the files for this tutorial down in the description below. If you're not already, then you might wanna consider joining. If you join the gold membership, then you get a whole bunch of extras. So the first thing I've got here is just basically like a screenshot here of Iceland. Now this can be whatever you want. It could be a different type of map. I've just taken this screenshot from online. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new composition here. Now these settings can be whatever you like, but basically all I'm going to do is just take that image and I'm just going to drag it straight in here. So the first thing that you really wanna try and do with all of this stuff is isolate that map or whatever it is that you're working on. So what I'm going to do with mine is I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to use key light and this will allow me basically, because the outside's blue, I can basically just isolate that background or you know remove that background from my image. Now, if I need to, I can also use my pen tool just to kind of create a bit of a mask. So the next thing we really want to focus on is trying to layer different elements together to make this look different because everyone nowadays online is doing map animations and they're just kind of using the same old boring techniques, you know, like just taking Google Earth zooms, things like that. You know, you want to really try and think about how can you make this look different and unique? That's what's going to make you know, your animations really stand out from the rest. So it's not only just about the actual animation, which is like the camera movements, the animated text, all those sort of things. You know, it's all of those things like the color palette right through to how you actually layer all of these elements together to really capture the interest of your target audience. So what I've also got here is I sourced this little image here of this paper texture, which I'm just gonna drag here in the background. Just gonna hit W so I can rotate this around. And then I'm just gonna kind of scale it down here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now I need to try and create a bit of a color palette here. So what I'm going to do is use basically like a tint to color correct the background image. Now these are the colors that I've ended up using here if you wanna follow along with exactly what I'm doing. But basically I've just mapped my white to be sort of like a bit more of a blue tone. So I wanna try and create a bit more like of a blue color tone like you can see I've done here in my original. I wanted to add a bit more texture. So we've got quite a bit of texture here in the background, but what I wanted to do was if I use this texturize, so you can find this by just searching for it up here and just searching for texturize and then just basically dragging it straight onto that layer. Now, if you go to that texture layer and set this to be our Iceland, which is our map, you'll see it kind of adds this little detail into the background. This just kind of adds a little bit of that texture. Next, what I want to do is kind of use this to build the color palette for my top image. So as you can see, this is just like a basic satellite image. And what I want to do now is colorize it. So the best way to do that is to use Lumetri color. And what I'm going to do is just start messing around with these basic sort of settings here. So I want to warm, warm it up a little bit. Then I can also just add a bit more contrast. So I'm really trying to bring up the contrast here. And I'm also just going to bring up the tint. That's going to give it a little bit more of that sort of red tone, a bit warmer color. And then what I can do is I like to come down here to the curves. You can use the creative uh, wheels here, but I, I tend to use this. And what I'm gonna do is drag up here on the shadows, cause I wanna sort of bring this, sort of flatten it out a little bit. So I'm gonna start with the red and I wanna bring a bit more of that red tone out here. And then I'm also going to bring a bit more of that sort of green color and then I'm also just gonna go down to my background. I'm gonna copy my texturize and I'll also want to paste that onto that same layer. And if I set that also to be that same layer and then drag up on this, all you can do is set that to be the Iceland layer and then sort of just drag up on this. It's very subtle, but it will just kind of give it that little bit of like almost like an emboss sort of look. So it'll just sort of sharpen up those edges just slightly. And what I'm going to do is then take that layer and I'm just going to duplicate it. And with the bottom one, what I'm going to do is I wanna keep the, the key light, but I wanna delete everything else. 
And then you'll see we've got two layers, so one underneath. I can rename this one to the shadow. And I want to create a unique shadow that sort of helps it blend into that background a bit better. So these are the things I added here. I added a fill and this is the fill color. So what I sort of did was I went to my blue color palette here and I just went for something a little bit darker, a bit more washed out. And then I'm going to add a radial fast blur. Now the radial fast blur, again, you can find all of these up here, but basically it gives you this little point here. It allows you to sort of create this unique sort of position. What I've done is move that point all the way out here so that we kind of get these streaks. And then I add a directional blur over the top and that softens those edges. The result is that you get this sort of really soft edge on part of it, but not all the way around. And you can then just kind of dial this up or down. So if you want less or more, you can sort of dial this up and down. What I'm going to do is come down here and I can change the blending mode to something like color burn. It's really gonna make that shadow sit into the background. Now, if you like these sort of things that I'm doing and you wanna learn more about all of these different techniques, this is exactly the sort of stuff that I talk about in detail in my animation pro course. In that, I go through in a lot more detail how to really layer animations or your designs together to make them look unique and really make your animation stand out. It's not only just about all the camera movement, it's about the design and what you create first before you actually start animating any camera or text or moving things over the top. So if you feel more comfortable already using After Effects and you want to learn more about all of these different techniques that I'm using, then check out my Animation Pro course. If you're more of a beginner, then I would recommend starting with my Animation Master course in that I walk you through, even if you've never used After Effects before, as a complete beginner, right through to actually how to create some really cool animations that stand out. I've had hundreds of students go through both of these courses and I've had nothing but fantastic feedback about both of them. But if you're serious about learning After Effects or you really wanna understand how to take your animations, make them pop or really stand out, make them look unique, then definitely check out those two courses via the link in the description. So what I found here was going with the sort of the map theme, I went and found this sort of image here of a map. Now I know this is not the correct ocean here for this exact map, so it's not 100% accurate, but I'm just using it as an example to sort of add some unique, you know, little lines and like a bit of information into this. So what I do first is I add basically the extraction and this will allow me to remove basically all of the light part of the image and keep just the lines and all of that little bit of nice juicy sort of text information. Then I can also add a bit of a fill and this is just gonna change the color. Again, I'm keeping with that same color palette, really important to sort of help blend all of this together. And then one last thing you can also do is just change the blending mode to like multiply and that's gonna help it sink into that background. You can also hit T and just dial this effect down or up. You know, you don't want it too distracting. If you find it a bit too much, you can just drop it underneath that that map, so it just kind of helps blend it a little bit better, it doesn't become too distracting, but that's up to you. Finally, what I like to do is just add a few little extra things. So I add an adjustment layer, and this can be basically like my, what I would call like the effects. And to this, I just add basically like the secret source. So I add a bit of sharpen. You can see it really brings out a lot of that detail. I add a little bit of a vignette and I scale up on the, basically the pin highlights. That's the key to it. Otherwise you just kind of end up looking a bit flat. So by scaling this up, you retain all this detail, but you still get those sort of soft dark edges. And then I also add a posterized time, set that to be 16 frames. That's that really slow jittery sort of look that'll come into play when we start doing our animation. Altogether, that just kind of really makes the whole thing pop and stand out. Again, now's the time you can go back, work on trying to blend that map even more. So if you go back to your map, you can mess around with all of those settings. You know, I can make this warmer, I could cool it down. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I find the curves is a better approach because it gives you more finite control over the individual colors. I then basically am ready to start doing a bit of animation. So to do that, all I do is create a null object, call this one my camera, and move that camera to wherever you want to zoom in. So say I wanted to zoom into 
you know, this part down here, what I can then do is move the camera there, then link all of those. And now when I hit S, I can create a scale keyframe and a position keyframe by P. Then I'm gonna hit U to bring up all of those keyframes. If I move across and just do some very slight animation, like a scale in, it's going to be stuck to that area. So the point of interest is that point. So if I scale, what it's doing is scaling into that point. So I like a little bit of movement here at the start. And then when we get to about here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to zoom quite quickly into this part of my map. So I just wanna do quite a bit of a fast zoom and then maybe a little bit more of a slow zoom at the very end. So we just kind of get these nice little precise movements. And that's what I like to see in a lot of animation. You know, you wanna take your viewer from one point and bring them into where you want them to focus on. So it's all about, you know, intent behind the function. Highlight all of those keyframes. I'm gonna make them easy ease. And then what I need to do is also go down to my keyframe interpolation, make these continuous Bezier. And that's gonna come into play when we go into the graph editor, because what we need to do is we need to basically just bring this front one up for the position and do the same for the scale. It's kind of gonna give us that slow movement, then it'll move quite quickly into that position and then slow right down. You can also bring this up. The continuous Bezier allows you to move these points up and down without basically, otherwise you'll be basically split. So you'll end up with two separate points. If you set it to be continuous Bezier, allow you for one smooth movement. I cover that in my courses. And then one last thing I like to do is just add a little bit of motion blur. You don't have to do that, but just kind of adds another little le level of realism. So when you're doing those fast zooms, you know, it really helps focus in on that area. And if I go back to my original here, you can see that I've got that very sort of precise camera movement. Something else I also added in was just rotation. So that's just where the camera's sort of rotating very slightly. Just adds another little level to this animation. If you're a gold member, then you can also download this bonus composition. I take it a bit further. I use some different techniques in this one and just show you how you can really kind of just take a boring looking map and really make it look completely different. You know, there's two very unique looks here from one very basic map and it didn't take that long relatively to make something that looks like this. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of the screen. I'll have links to all my courses down in the description. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.